Good day, students. Uh, welcome to number 15 on our study of proof by mathematical induction. Remember to visit our website at mathgoodserve.com um, on the free calc for access to the remainder of um, the tutorials on the mathematical induction series. So before we get started with question number 15, let's go ahead and I'll uh, highlight our plan of attack for solving, for carrying out our proof. Now proofs by um, induction involve three parts. The first part is the base case. Base case. Um, for the base case, you just have to show that the statement is true for the initial condition um, of n. In the problem that we're doing today, we're going to show that the um, case holds for n um, equals 1. And then next, you, uh, the next part is the inductive hypothesis. Right? For to the inductive hypothesis, you're going to be making an assumption, all right? So for the inductive hypothesis, we're going to assume that the statement is true, assume that um, the statement is true for n equals k. So assume that n equals k for some k in the set of um, integers. The integers have to satisfy the original condition, of course. And then the last part is the inductive step, all right? The inductive step um basically is dependent on the inductive hypothesis so, so for the inductive step we have to show that um n equals k is true follows or implies that the next step n equals k plus one is also true okay if we can show all these three um parts then we'll be done okay let's take a look at um, our problem all right, so let's take a look at uh, question number 15. Um, so for problem 15, we are to uh, use the method of induction, use the method of um, induction to show, to, sh um, to prove that a given statement um, 2 to the n is greater than or equal to 1 plus n um, for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay? Of course, n is in a set of natural numbers. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and um, uh, carry out this um, proof. So we're going to start with the first part, which is the base case. Um, for the base case, we are going to show that um, show that um, n equals one is true. Okay, all the candidates for n are one, and every integer that um, is greater than one. So we want to show that n n equals one is true. So if we input one on the left side, do we get a situation where the output is greater than or equal to what you get when you input one? into the right side of the inequality. All right, so let's go ahead and work that out. So we have two to the first power by inputting one here. The question is, is it greater than or equal to one plus, you input one here, one plus one, is it? Then when you simplify it, um, is two greater than or equal to one plus one, which is two? The answer is yes, so it checks out. So our base case or foundation is solid. Now we're going to move on to part two, which is the um, the inductive hypothesis. All right, so inductive hypothesis. Go ahead and write that down. For the inductive hypothesis, we are going to be making an assumption. Okay, so for the inductive hypothesis, we're going to um, assume that um, n equals k is true for some uh, k in a set of integers. All right, so how do we write that down? We'll write it as follows. We're going to assume, assume that um, 2 to the k is greater than or equal to 1 plus k uh, for some k um, in the set of natural numbers, OK? Remember, n is also in a set of natural numbers, okay? For some k, the set of natural numbers, 
um, we assume that this statement is true. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the inductive step. But before we do that, we have to, I missed, I forgot to write something here. We have to show that it is true. Okay. Assume that this statement is true uh, for some k in a set of natural numbers. Now, the inductive step, uh, we want to show that um, based on this inductive hypothesis, that's right, it's down inductive step. <clears throat> if I move one step, do I take one step to one step up on the left side, does that result in the right side advancing by a step also? All right, so for the inductive step, we want to show that n equals k is true by assumption follows that the next step n equals k plus 1 is also true. All right, if we can accomplish that, then we're, we're done with the proof. So we'll start with the, the left side. We're going to go consider the next um, term, which is basically 2 to the k plus 1. We're advancing to the next integer after k. All right, so we're going to uh, make use of um, the properties of exponents here. 2 to the k plus 1. Uh, can be written as 2 to the k times uh, 2, right? Remember um, that when you multiply exponents with the same base, you add the exponents, right? So what we're doing is we're doing the, the opposite here. All right, now, um, based on our inductive hypothesis, we can make a substitution here. We know that 2 to the k is greater than or equal to 1 plus k, right? So since if 2 to the k is greater than or equal to 1 plus k, this is follows that 2 to the k plus 1 has to be greater than or equal to um, 1 plus k times 2, okay? Let's put a side note here. We know this because of our assumption. So by assumption, by assumption in two. <clears throat> All right, now, now that we have this situation, uh, we can uh, do some algebraic manipulations to this expression. We can distribute the two. So we have two plus uh, two K. Let's take a look at two K for a minute. Uh, how does two K compare with K if K is greater than or equal to one? We know for a certainty that two K is greater than um, greater than or equal to, we know it's greater than, but we can include the equal to piece also. 2k is greater than or equal to k for uh, k greater than um, or equal to 1. If you take a look at the values of k, 1 or greater, this side will always be greater than the right side. This will always be the double. All right? So um, from that, <coughs> let's, let's put since. We can continue by making a substitution. Now, this quantity right here is going to be um, greater than or equal to 2 plus k. Okay, let me put that down here um, so that I can continue. So um, based on this assumption right here, we know that this inequality is going to be greater than or equal to 2 plus k. How do we know that? Because um, 2k is greater than or equal to k. So if you add 2, it's going to be greater than 2 plus k also. All right. So let's go ahead and break this up a little bit more. So this is greater than or equal to, um, we can write 2 as 1 plus 1. So we can write this expression um, as 1 plus 1 plus, we can group the k together, 1 plus 1 plus k, okay? So if we bring down our 2 to the k plus 1 down here, what we have is a situation where 2 to the k plus 1 is greater than or equal to 1 plus 1 plus k. This is exactly what we want because by advancing the left side by 1 integer value to k plus 1, it resulted in a corresponding increase on the right side to k plus 1. All right? Well, I wrote it as 1 plus k. I can switch it around. <coughs> I can write it as, <coughs> sorry about that, 2 to the k plus 1. 
is greater than or equal to 1 plus k plus 1 also. All right? So th that's exactly what we want. So let's write our conclusion um, since the statement the statement is true for the base case n equals 1 and <clears throat> truth for n equals k follows that follows that um, n equals k plus 1 is also true The statement, the statement is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. Of course, n is in the set of integers. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Do feel free to subscribe to our channel for updates to other great clips such as this. And do post a comment to let us know what you think about this presentation. We appreciate it. More clips can be found on mathcutserve.com for mathematical induction specifically. You can go under the pre-calculus tab to access those tutorials. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.